Hello, my name is Ariadna Montiel. I'm professor at Monterrey Institute of Technology and Higher Education in Mexico. And today I'm going to talk about how we can use gamma rewards as distance indicators in cosmology. Here, the outline of my talk. First, I will talk briefly about the state of art of the dark energy problem. Then I will show you the general properties of gamma ray boards and how they have a key role in the future development of cosmology, since they have been observed at higher redshifts than supernovae IA. After that, I will present the calibration that we perform in this work and the results we obtain when we study three popular effective dark energy models. After that, I'm going to show you the results and our findings of our work and the calibration of this new sample of gamma ray boards. Let me start with the state of art of the dark energy problem. We know that our universe in, is in an expanding universe, and we know that we can describe this expanding universe by the Einstein equations of general relativity and by the robertson walker metric from which the Friedman equations can be derived. And from these equations, we have the description of the contents of our universe. And also we can see that we have a positive acceleration. This equation implies that the parameter of the equation state is less than minus one divided by three. And while this is an open question, we don't know what is dark energy, just we know that we live in an expanding universe and this is a, a question that we want to respond. Also, in the two, in the second Friedman equation, sorry, we want to, to describe the, this accelerated expansion. So, as a part of the standard cosmological model, we have also the continuity equation. The first evidence came from the supernovae data. This was done by two teams, measuring the matter density parameter through the distance redshift relation of type IA supernovae. And when compared to local type A supernovae, the supernovae at redshift around 0.5 were fainter than expected in a matter-dominated universe. And these two teams interpreted the measurements as evidence for an accelerating universe with a cosmological constant consistent with a flat universe. We can see also in this plot that the points of the supernovae are more consistent with the model, including a quantity of cosmological constant around 0.7. Also, I have to stress that the supernovae IA play a very important role, thanks to the recognition that the peak luminosity of these stars was tightly correlated with their shape of the light curve. Uh, this is an important point because we think that these stars can be our best standard candles to infer distance in cosmology. The problem is that this data can cover only a relatively small range of redshift. In fact, we know that the farthest supernovae IA observed so far has a redshift of around 2. So that's the problem that we have when we want to explain what is the dark energy or what is driving the accelerated expansion. Before to proceed, I, I would like to say a few words about a, what is a standard candle, why it's important to calibrate all of our data set available so far. So this data or these stars uh, born when a dwarf a star gains matter from a companion star, mainly red giant a star and then reaches the Chandrasekhar limit and explodes and explodes with a typical energy that allows a very typical light of curve. However, strictly speaking, this behavior is not exactly the same for all the type IA supernovae. And because of that, we say that these stars are quasi standard candles because we have to perform a calibration. We have to do a lot of corrections in their light curve due to main sources of variability. The first one, the stretch, that means we have variability intrinsic to the light curve, but also we have to uh, perform a correction due to the color. And here is where gamma ray boards come to the scene because the supernovas are not perfect standard candles. We have to do a little work before to use them as distance indicators. So that 
allow us to introduce a new data set to extend the redshift that we are studying when we are interested to constrain uh, different cosmological models to explain what is dark energy. So the advantage of gamma ray boards is that they cover a much, much greater distances. The redshift that we have recorded for the gamma ray boards are around nine. So we are extending a lot the redshift of the supernovae. But remember, we have to calibrate them. And later in the talk, I'm going to show you what are we doing to calibrate them. In order to know the best values for the cosmological parameters, we have to use Bayesian statistics to extract the maximum information from the observations. And also from the observational point of view, it's necessary to know the luminosity distance as well as the redshift, as in the case of the supernovae data. In general, when we are in position to infer the amount of dark energy and dark matter of the universe with different data sets, uh, here, for instance, we use supernovae, VAO data, and also the CMB. Of course, this is a very old result from 2011. The data set can be used to infer the amount of the dark energy uh, that is in our universe. And also in this other plot, we can see that the parameter of the equation state is around minus one. So here with these observations, we accept that the cosmological constant, or we can also convince, convince that the cosmological constant is the simplest candidate for dark energy. So we see that the standard model of cosmology is this cosmological constant. However, we are interested to update our results when we have more data and uh, refine analysis or statistical analysis. The results that we obtain after that are this. Uh, this is a plot from 2014, for example, using also the JLA compilation of supernovae greater than the first one I show you. And this is a sample with around 700 data points. And also we are using here the results from the Planck in gray and also we are using Bayo. But the results tell us the same. Our universe prefers a um, cosmological constant or prefers the cosmological constant, a parameter of the equation state around minus one. And in this plot, we also obtain or we see the, the results from the Planck coming from the 2018. And also this plot tells us that the parameter of the equation state is around minus one. And here is another interest, interesting plot of results because here we are using in gray and, and red a compilation bigger than the first one with around 1000 data points of supernovae IA. Pantheon is the, our uh, largest and latest compilation of the supernovae IA. The results are very different from the ones coming from the first compilation I showed you. Actually, is this confident region with the discovery sample of uh, gamma ray boards from the ends of the 90s. And so the results are similar. We see that we have with the largest compilation a cosmological constant around 0 0.7 and with a dark matter content around 0 0.3. We can think, well, uh, if your results are very good with supernovae, uh, you can wait more supernovae data and that's it and, and refine uh, results from CMB, for example. However, I would like to remember you that uh, we don't know what's dark energy and we want to know if there is a possibly evolution of the parameter of the dark energy equation of state. And this is why we introduce a new data set. So, also, I have to say that we want high precision in many of the distance indicators and all the distance indicators present several sources of bias. And as I said before, supernovae, for instance, are not pe perfect standard condoms. So we want to improve upward constraints using more data that confirm our results or not. So. Actually, the short-term priority of supernovae cosmology, as I know, 
is low redshift surveys in order to improve the statistics or improve the calibration. Also, the control of the selection bias, etc. So, because any contribution from alternative distance indicators, preferably covering a wide range of redshift, is key to improve cosmological distance determinations in order to have different sensitivity constraining cosmological parameters. So, in few words, because we are interested to discover what's dark energy and to know if it has a redshift evolution. So that is why we think gamma ray worlds could be useful cosmic indicators to study higher redshifts than supernovas. Now, let me show you very quickly what is the gamma ray worlds or how we can use them as distance indicators. Gamma ray worlds are the most powerful high energy events now in the universe. They are thought to be produced through either the merger of two neutron star or neutron star and a black hole, or the collapse of a massive star with masses 20 times larger than the mass of the sun. And because of their extremely high energies, they are detectable at cosmological distance. In the most common type of gamma ray boards that we can see here, a dying massive stars forms a black hole, which drives a particle jet into a space. Light across the spectrum arises from the hot gas near the black hole, collisions within the jet, and from the jet's interaction with the surroundings. Now, the point is that gamma ray boards can be seen isotropically in the upward universe, that's an important point. And because they are extremely powerful, we can see up to very, very high redshifts. So the map that we see when we are looking for the gamma ray boards, it's very homogeneous, as you can see in these two pictures. They come from the Swift and Fermi collaborations. And as you can see, they are distributed very isotropically and homogeneous. We see the boards independently from of their brightness or duration or spectrum or any other characteristic. We see them very isotropically in the sky. So this is an important point. Just the colors uh, indicate here the year were detected. Now I want to show you how we can classify the gamma ray boards in two types. That depends on the duration. The short gamma ray boards have a duration of less than two seconds and the long gamma ray boards have a duration greater than two seconds. So the long gamma ray boards in general comes from massive star collapse and the short gamma ray boards in general from the mergers of neutron stars. And here we can see in the plot that it's uh, more common to see long duration boards because we have more time to, to see them. The long gamma durations are the ones that we have used as standard candles. And in one moment I'm going to show you why is this. But this is the challenge, to explain or to convince you that the long gamma ray boards can be calibrated to use them as standard contents. So we are working with a sample of long gamma ray boards. And remember, this observation comes from massive star collapses. As I said before, the main advantage of the gamma ray boards over the supernovae is that they cover a greater redshift range in comparison with the supernovae. But the main disadvantage is that the usual gamma ray boards calibration as distance indicator has an inherent circularity problem. Since the determination of the energy flux typically assumes an underlying cosmological model. And to perform the calibration, we use a luminosity relations for the long gamma ray boards, as I said before. And this Illuminosity relations are connections between observable properties of the gamma ray emissions and the luminosity or energy. Later in the talk, when I show the steps to perform the calibration, I'm going to detail how we overcome this circularity problem. But now I would like to show you some of the first empirical luminosity correlations found in long gamma ray boards. 
So here, for instance, we see some of the first correlations proposed for long gamma ray boards. This is a correlation between the luminosity and the spectrum lag. And also here we have a correlation between the luminosity and the variability. These two correlations were proposed around the 2000. And here we have a correlation between the peak energy and the luminosity. And here the, the correlation between the peak energy and the collimate corrected energy peak also. These two correlations, as you can see, have a less dispersion than these other two. And the problem with this and many other correlations between observables of the gamma ray boards are that we have a very few points and or, or a lot of dispersion in the correlations. So in this work, we are going to use a tight correlation between the peak energy and the isotropic energy. And this correlation was proposed by Amati in the 2002. This is how the Amati relation looks. This is a recent compilation of gamma ray boards. It contains around 193, if I remember well. And this is a work from the 2019. And we are going to use also the Amati relation because we think that this is a good correlation between the observables of the gamma rays. So besides of that, I have to say that the Amati relations have also some problems. Some words have claimed that the instrumental selection bias, even if they may affect the sample, cannot be responsible for the existence of the same spectral energy correlations. And additionally, the Amati relation could arguably change the width redshift. However, previous analysis have shown the opposite based on current data works from 2017, I think. And in this plot, for instance, we see also that the correlation has been confirmed by several detectors, including Swift and Fermi. So if we are sure that we can use gamma ray boards studying these correlations of their observables, before to proceed, I have to say that while such correlations are not fully understood from first principles, their existence naturally leads to the consideration that gamma ray boards could be used as distance indicators because we see them up to redshifts around nine, more or less, as I said. So let me show you our contribution in this work. Mainly, I have to say that we present a new and independent data set of gamma ray boards calibrated in a cosmological independent way. This is an important point. If we are interested in studying another cosmological model. Also, in this work, because different gamma ray boards detectors are characterized by different detection and spectroscopy sensitivity as a function of gamma ray boards intensity and spectrum, we consider data exclusively from a single catalog, the Fermi GBM, which prevents selection biases and other instrument associated systematics. Also, to avoid extra bias, we select only gamma ray boards with redshift determined through spectroscopic methods. So, our sample contains 74 gamma ray boards. We we'll start with 107 data points of gamma ray boards coming from the Fermi satellite. And the question is why? Well, first, we know the gamma ray boards spectrum is mainly uh, described in terms of the empirical spectrum fun function, the band function, this is the band function. But while the SWIFT satellite has provided the largest number of gamma ray boards with redshift, to existing catalogs, the bad instrument of this satellite is limited to energies up to 150 kiloelectron volts. 
but this value lies below the average of peak energy and consequently it's impossible to obtain directly the flux and luminosity for many of the gamma ray boards observed by the bat suit satellite. On the other hand, Fermi is the instrument with the largest count of long gamma ray boards with redshift and has the advantage that this detector, the GBM of the Fermi satellite, allows uh, for the determination of all the spectral parameters in the band function. So that is why we have compiled and reduced a sample of long gamma ray boards with no redshifts exclusively from the Fermi GBM catalog. Now, including long gamma ray boards from other telescopes aside from the Fermi GVM pertains of observational biases caused by different sensitivities in the range of energy intervals and energy fluxes of four inch instrument. Such biases bring uncertainties to the determination of the fluence and we avoid them over sample in contrast with the other recent compilations. Also, we limit our sample to those gamma ray boards with redshift determined through spectroscopic methods, either from the afterglow or from the host galaxy, because the determination of the redshift from photometry is subject to the learning curve effect. That is, uh, there is a drive in the mean redshift over time as a consequence of different instruments. And we avoid further bias and discard gamma ray boards with redshift set through such method. So because of that, we limit our sample to gamma ray boards with redshift determined through spectroscopic methods. And also we discard gamma ray boards which present significant uncertainties in the spectral parameters, namely the energy peak and the volumetric fluence because of their poor contribution of, to the fitting procedure. Thus, after selecting objects meeting the above criteria from our initial sample of 107 gamma ray boards, we finish with a sample of 74 gamma ray boards in this redshift range. We also present in our work, in, if you are interested, you can see our paper, and we present also their spectral parameters and also their associated errors. Okay, so we work with this sample of 74 gamma ray boards. Maybe it's a small sample, but we are sure that we are selecting the data that is capable to perform a good analysis in cosmology. Now I would like to show you how calibrate this sample. To calibrate our sample, we follow a model independent calibration that was proposed by Amati in 2019. However, we perform a lot of improvements to his work, uh, we think. <laughs> Thus, we studied this uh, Amati relation. It's a relation between the isotropic energy and the peak energy. And S bolo here, uh, here is the definition of the isotropic energy. The S bolo is the volumetric fluence of the gamma ray boards, of the, well, the gamma ray at this redshift. And uh, this redshift also transforms the observed gamma ray board's durations to the source cosmological red frame. And as I said before, an important drawback of the usual gamma ray board's calibration as uh, distance indicators is an inherent circularity problem. Since the determination of the energy flux uh, typically assumes a cosmological model through the luminosity distance. So to construct the isotropic energy, we need the luminosity distance and here is we where we introduce the cosmological model. So we are going to adopt a strategy presented in the, the last work of Amati in the 2019 to overcome the circularity problem. However, we are going to perform some improvements to that calibration. First, we employ the Bezier parametric curve of degree 2 through this equation. And to construct this Bezier parametric curve, we use a Hubble parameter data coming from the cosmic chronometers approach to build this curve. And the objective is to obtain a monotonic growing function in such a way that we can recover the 
cosmological expansion and also we can identify the Hubble constant when we set the redshift equal to zero. And the idea is to construct this function H2 through the cosmic chronometers to build the Bezier curve. And then after that, we are capable to construct the luminosity distance and then we can construct the isotropic energy. So the idea is to perform this fit in the best way. So here we are using the cosmic chronometers approach. As I said, the data is coming from the Capo Cielo from 2018. And this is the data point. And in purple line, you can see the Bezier fit of the cosmic chronometers. Here we have a little improvement of the previous work because we are adding uh, to the measurement error reported in the Capo Cielo 2018. We are adding extra bias to the Hubble parameter, but this extra bias comes from an analysis uh, reported in Moresco from 2020. And the reason is that we know that there are a lot of uncertainties in these data sets, but we are sure that this data is cosmology independent technique that allows to measure the whole parameter as a function of the redshift. But the problem is also that remains a lot of systematic uncertainties and we need to take account uh, carefully. So in the work of, uh, presented in, by Moresco, report that the sources of these uncertainties are mostly due to the dependence of the stellar population synthesis model used to calibrate the measurement. Also, we have uncertainties coming from the dependence on the estimate of the stellar metallicity of the population. Also, we have uncertainties coming from the dependence on the assumed model of star formation history. And also there is an influence of a possible residual star formation due to a young subdominant component underlying the selected sample. So the conclusions of the work of Moresco et al. in the paper of the 2020 is that we have to take in account these uncertainties. And because of that, we add to the measurement error of the Hubble parameter data set, the extra bias as was reported in Moresco et al. And also for consistency, given that the analysis of Moresco was carried out through simulations up to red chips around uh, 1.5, we limit our cosmic clocks uh, Hubble data to this range. So instead of using the original 31 measurements of Hubble data, Reported in Capo Cielo, we work with a subsample of 28 measurements of Hubble parameter with maximum redshift equal to 1.43. So with this data, with this subsample of 28 measurements of Hubble parameter, we perform the Bezier fit and we obtain the H2 function in order to construct the luminosity distance. So after we have the luminosity distance, we insert that luminosity distance in the isotropic energy. And this point, we are uh, ready to fit the Amati relation because to fit the Amati relation, we need the isotropic energy. So up to this point, we don't know anything about the cosmological model. And now the step three is to fit the Amati relation. And we employed bivariate correlate er errors and an intr intrinsic scatter method. Uh, this fitting method, in general, performs a robust linear regression, which is useful when it is unclear which variable should be treated as the independent one and which as the dependent one. We are not sure what is the dependent or independent variable here. So we think that this kind of fit can be useful to be sure that we are doing a good analysis. Also, this method takes into account the possible intrinsic scatter of the data. As you can see, we have a lot of scatter with our data, but we think that we are taking into account also in the feed. 
And of course, we are using the measurement errors in both variables. These points are very different from the Amati relation method, the, the original uh, Amati relation. So we found some uh, differences in our results when we use this data to study other cosmological models. Here I'm presenting uh, the values for the parameters of the Amati relations A and B, uh, just to say that our values in good agreement with previous works. Also, we are obtaining the covariance matrix. Okay, the last step is calculate the distance modulus for each gamma ray boards by using the calibrate luminosity distance. Here I show you also the calibrate gamma ray boards together the supernovae IA distance moduli that is the Pantheon sample. And also we are showing the lambda CVM model, a flat lambda CVM model with a mega matter 0 0.315. And as you can see, we obtain a good agreement with the global trend of the supernovae data and also with the flat lambda CVM model. Up to this point, we are ready to use them to study other cosmological models. So just to summarize, gamma ray boards are important because we see them up to redshifts higher than the uh, supernovae ones. The problem with the gamma ray boards is that we need to calibrate them. To calibrate them, we use uh, luminosity relations. And the drawback of these luminosity relations is that uh, we need to know the luminosity distance before to calibrate many of the correlations for the gamma ray boards. And specifically for the Amati relation, we need to know the luminosity distance to construct the isotropic energy. And to overcome the circularity problem, I mean, to avoid to introduce a cosmological model, we perform a Bezier fit that allows to construct a luminosity distance in a cosmological independent way. And after that, we are ready to construct or to, yeah, to construct the distance modulus for the gamma ray boards. And after that, we are in a position as with supernovae data to use them to study dark energy models. Here in this work, we study three effective models. The three models we are studying are listed here. The lambda CVM that with a parameter of the equation state uh, equal to minus one. The omega CVM that allows a parameter of the equation state equals to a constant different to minus one and the CPL parameterization that allows the evolution with the redshift. Okay, so we want to know in general with supernovae, with CNB, with BAO or gamma ray or whatever, we want to know if the observations are in agreement with these models or not. So here also we are using a standard software. Uh, we use class and Monte Python and together the calibrated sample that I showed you before. We use also type IA supernovae, the Pantheon sample, the Bayo data, uh, CMB data, plus the gamma ray boards calibrated here. And also just to compare our results with the previous ones, we use also the compilation reported by Amati in this work. So I'm going to show you our findings here for the lambda CVM model. We see in the first in first point the results coming from supernovae, BAO, and CMB, the standard results for omega matter. And when we introduce gamma ray boards uh, labeled with one, we are using the data set compiled by Amati et al. in the 2019. And when we are using two non cis we are not including the extra bias for the cosmic clocks. And when we use two cis we are using the extra bias. So we are going to focus in these results because we, we think that are more confident in our analysis. So if you remember, we have a large dispersion in our calibrated sample. 
However, we obtained results that are in agreement with the other results, including or not gamma ray boards. So here we don't find a different result if we don't use gamma ray boards, which we know uh, so far. However, when we study the Omega CDM model, we obtain a little differences when we use our calibrated sample and when we use the calibrated sample by Amati. In the um, Amati work, we obtain a value for the parameter of the equation state for the case of the Omega CDM model around minus 0.86. And when we use our calibrated sample, we obtain a value for the omega zero parameter around 0 0.97. So we are close to the lambda CDM model than the result for Amati. And also we obtain result with a small uncertainty instead of the larger uncertainty in the work of Amati. We think that it's because we are uh, introducing another way to construct the luminosity distance. If we see the confidence regions, maybe you don't see a lot of difference, but yeah, we have to say that yes, we obtain consistency with the restrictions coming from the other data sets employed. So here, our results are very similar to the previous one. And for the case, of the CPL model, here we have more differences because here we obtain that gamma ray board favors the lambda CDN model more than the other two cases. I mean, when we obtain the, our best calibrated sample, we obtain a best fit for the omega zero around minus one. And when we use the data set calibrated by Amati, we obtain a more positive parameter. So, this is a, an important difference. And also, we use the confidence regions. Uh, maybe if we see the plot, we can see that the differences are more clear because we obtain our calibrated sample with the extra bias for the cosmic logs is in blue. And the purple is from the calibrated sample by Amati and the gray confidence region that is behind these two confidence regions is coming from just supernovae, Bayo and CMB. So in this case, for the CPL model, we don't see a redshift evolution of the parameter of the equation state, but we see tighter confidence regions. And here we think that maybe our adequate handling of errors or our choice of calibration method allows tighter confidence regions for the parameter of this model in comparison to the previous works. So we think that it's important how we calibrate the gamma ray board sample. So if we think in points to take home, I wanted to say that in this work we select a sample of 74 gamma ray boards carefully. And we think that the Amati relation in this case, when we calibrate it, we find consistency with the previous works that study these models. Also, I have to say that gamma ray boards can be used as distance indicators. And we have to be sure how we are calibrating this data because impact our results in the cosmological models that we are studying. And we argue in favor of our analysis when considering gamma ray boards uh, together other luminosity distance proofs. Also, I would like to remind you our sample stems from a single catalog and in the calibrated uh, calibration processes, we take into account the impact of systematic uncertainties of the Hubble parameter measurements and aspects overlooked on previous works. And moreover, we take special care in propagating the uncertainties of the best fit parameters for the Bezier curves, as well as for the material relation. So we think that these are important points. Also, I would like to thank to the organizers for the kind invitation. And if you are interested in this 
uh, works. My email is this. I will be happy to answer your questions or talk about this topic. And thank you so much for your attention.